Welcome back for another Power Back episode. If you're new around here, Power Back episodes are like 20 minute mini coaching sessions where we hyper focus on a very specific topic to help you take your power back to reclaim who you are, what you do, how you show up in this world, and honestly, just really truly own who you are. And one of the areas that I see trips up, holds back, constantly is pulling and tugging at people as they are living their life and growing their business is the need to take care of everyone else first. I know you have a good heart. I know you have good intentions. I know that you want the people that you love to have what they need and to to feel loved and to feel cared for. And going against that is not what this episode is about. This episode is about reclaiming yourself. So instead of putting your ass last, We are prioritizing who you are and what you need first. So if you either identify as a people pleaser, you know that you have people pleasing tendencies and, or you have recognized and are wondering, okay, I I know that I do this. How the fuck do I break it? Then today's power back episode is just for you. Before we get into the nitty gritty of that, we have a lot of new friends around here. So welcome to new subscribers of the Gutsy Podcast. I see you. I hear you. I'm reading your comments. I am reading your reviews. Thank you so much. A little quick reintroduction. My name is Laura Ora. I am an alignment coach for female entrepreneurs. I am your host on this journey on the Gutsy Podcast. And I also happen to own a branding agency and a building. So you could say that I'm not bored. But my primary focus right now, my heart and my soul, every ounce of my existence inside and outside of my body is helping you to recognize that the words that you say to yourself fucking matter, that thoughts and beliefs and expectations and shoulds are all getting inside of you and are trying to navigate your path. And then when you can start to build awareness and have grounded practical tools to start shifting things, when you start giving yourself permission to be who you truly are and permission to take messy action to figure things out along the way. That, my friend, is where the fucking magic starts to happen. That's where you grow your confidence. That's where you create success. And that's where that vision board of yours starts to become your reality. So it's an honor to have you in my corner of the world because it tells me that you are here because you are hungry. You are ready for change. You are ready to surround yourself with like-minded people. And maybe most importantly, You're ready to sit down the expectations and start doing this fucking life your way. So let's get into today's power back episode. We're talking about people pleasing my friends. First, I want to tell you a quick story because I am still a recovering people pleaser. I would say I'm, I'm like 95% of the way there. I I've been trained since a little girl that it is my responsibility that people's well-being is my responsibility, people's finances are my responsibility, people's livelihood is my responsibility. And with that very deeply seated conditioning from childhood, I carry that shit like a badge of honor straight into my business. People pleasing takes on this tendency where we must put ourselves last in order to make sure that everyone else has what they need first. And for me in the business, what that looked like was going outside of myself for answers, looking to what everyone else was doing, implementing tools and resources and methods and strategies and services and voices and how everyone else was doing it. Well, that is what worked. So therefore that must be what I need to do as well. And why? Because the livelihood of the people in my organization depended on me. Even though that I would get glimpses of answers, my gut was always trying to speak to me. I always had these inclinations of what I needed to do to be able to get us to the next level. But I was so fixated on the terrifying thought that I would let people down that I ended up driving the whole fucking bus into the ground. I was also constantly worried about like, well, what are they going to say? And what do they need? And let me make sure everyone else is taken care of first. Someone else had an emergency, you know, Laura's running to the rescue. Laura is the fixer. Laura is the savior. Like I, that is not my fucking title. And so what I needed to do was get very real about how taking care of everything and everyone else first was actually stopping me from being able to grow the business, from being able to achieve health, from being able to do the things that I actually really wanted to do. So my first question for you today is, do you want to make everyone in your life happy or do you 
want to be happy, successful, and fulfilled. Because hard and fast truth, my friend, you can't have both. Now, there is a really big difference between helping people and people pleasing. I'm not suggesting that you stop helping people. In fact, I know that if you're listening to the show, you give a fuck about people and rightfully so, right? You want the people in your life, in your organization, in your family, in your friend cycle, you want them to do well. You want to support them in their endeavors. You want to be there when they need you on the other side of the phone. Those things you can have and be successful, content, fulfilled, and happy. What I'm suggesting today is that by putting yourself off, by taking care of everyone else first, by putting everyone else's needs before your own, that's where we draw the line in the sand. Because here's what's actually happening when you are taking care of everyone else first. You feel like you're, you're the savior, right? You feel like you're coming to the rescue, like everyone's happy. And if everyone's happy, then nobody leaves. And look, I still, to this day, am undoing abandonment challenges. So I get it. I hear you. What I've learned from that total side note is that the people that are intended to stay will, and that you can't control other people's actions. It's also not a reflection of who you are. You are worthy of love. You are worthy of being seen and you're fucking worthy of being here. So let's say that you've got a full week in your business. You got a full week at work. You've got stuff going on. There's some things that you'd like to do. You know, you, you, your brain's going, your body's going, things are happening. And then the phone rings and someone needs you to do something. So you stop and you go, and then someone needs you to pick something up and then you go get that. And before you know it, like all of this stuff has happened, your email's going off and there's a bunch of people that need things there. The DMS are going off. So you're feeling pulled over there to answer things. By the way, we have this expectation that we have to like answer everyone in the very fucking second that they ding on our phone. And that's just simply not the truth. That is a perceived expectation and something that can be undone. By the way, another side note, how you respond and when you respond is training people. So if you're answering emails the second that they come in, then guess what that person is going to expect moving forward. So in a single day, you've gotten 40 different types of notifications, asks, requests, uh, needs from other people, and you have played a professional game of whack-a-mole where everything is on fire and you are the firefighter. This morning, though, You didn't own any of those fires, did you? But you feel this deeply, deeply rooted responsibility to make sure that they are taken care of first. And you know what's happening then? You are getting what is left over. Your business is getting what's left of you. Taking care of everyone else's shit all day long and then leaving your responsibilities for yourself, for your life and for your business at the end of the day. How many times have you got there and you're like, I gotta do this thing. And the energy behind it, it's just, it's gnarly. It's tired. It's exhausted. And then guess where that energy is going? Straight into your damn business. Taking care of everyone else first also builds resentment. Even though, I mean, most of these people in your world, I hope have good intentions and they're not like trying to drain the shit out of you. In fact, again, it's probably a little bit of conditioning because they know that you're going to jump when they say jump. So they're just putting out the ask. It ends up being our responsibility and how we respond. And notice how I said respond, not react. Because reacting is where you're saying yes too quickly. It's where you're making rash decisions. It's where you're dropping everything. So too long of this, you end up building resentment against people. And, and it's not even known to them. You're just like, I don't, I don't want to do this. I can't get to my shit. I don't want to, you know, I, I don't have the time. It, that's because you made the decision. It also ends up with this, this emptiness and this lack of fulfillment because you just can't seem to get to your own shit. And that's not even just work shit, right? It's not even just business shit. It's also your life. It's your time away. It's your day off away from email. How many times have you gone on vacation? You're like, oh, we'll just check email once every morning. And then you get sucked into the fucking black hole. Taking care of everyone else also leaves no time or energy for figuring things out for you. Time to build something, time to create something, time to discover things, time to play, right? If you're just constantly worried about what everyone else needs of you, how are you going to play in your life? 
And that might look like hanging out with your friends. It might look like taking a painting class. It might look like going on a hike. But if you're constantly giving all of you to everyone else, there is nothing left. There is no energy left. There is no time left for you to do those things. So now we've created this, this fullness in life, but not in the greatest ways. This is where you're busy all the time. This is where you're like, I don't have time for me. And remember, I mentioned resentment. Think about how many people are walking around with unfulfilled desires and dreams and ideas. And you know what that ends up leading into? And this one might make you want to punch me in the face is it keeps you in the hamster wheel of complaining. I don't have time to do the things that I want to do. This person always needs a bunch of shit for me. All these fucking people in my email, they're just always asking me for stuff. And I always have to get things. The inner work that we mentioned earlier that I talked to you about, like deeply rooted things and childhood things, I'm not dismissing that. And that is the work, my friends, is to recognize what your tendencies are so that you can start to build awareness, so that you can start to build strength, so that you can release yourself of those. Because once you're aware and once you have the tools necessary, now these things become a choice. And so if you're choosing to not do the inner work, if you're choosing to not get tools, if you're choosing to not move forward and you're just sitting around bitching about it all the time, you are choosing to keep yourself in the people pleasing cycle because you know how to master it. You know how to handle it. You know how to pivot it. And you're going to get pats on the back. Are you willing to let people love you simply for who you are outside of what you do for them? Mm. Well, there's a... There's one to journal on today. And then if we think about this from a business standpoint, your business then also is getting what's left of you. If you're putting off your tasks, your creation, your CEO moments, your visionary time to the end of the day, till the end of the week, till the end of the month, whenever, when there's maybe a little sliver bit of time, that's not your best work usually, right? It's what's left. It's like, it becomes a have to instead of a get to. And like I mentioned, that energy then is going into your business. It's also stopping you from being able to create new things, to be able to launch a new program, to be able to launch a new service, to be able to take incredible women on a retreat halfway across America, from writing your book, from starting your blog, from opening a new Instagram account. People pleasing is stopping you from being happy, successful, and fulfilled. So let's turn the page a little bit, right? We've, we've understood and talked about the reality behind people pleasing. We've talked about some of the inner work. We've talked about the consequences and how it's affecting your life and your business. So you might be saying, okay, Laura, what do I do about it? How do I care less and do less? Well, I want to point out that it's really not about caring less, rather prioritizing more. Say that again. It's not about caring less. It's about prioritizing more because what's happening when you're constantly pouring into others and leaving yourself for last, it's a condition, which means most of those thoughts, feelings, expectations, and habits are stored nice and neatly in your subconscious mind. And if you've listened to some previous episodes about the subconscious and your brain and how all that functions, you may know and understand that that's where you're running on autopilot. It's like the programming of your mind and your body. Your subconscious is like an online storage bin and it holds on to everything. So first, foremost, and always is to recognize and build insane radical awareness around your people-pleasing tendencies. And this is not about beating yourself up. This is not about judgment. This is not about being like, oh my gosh, look what I'm doing. No, we're not doing that. Okay. We're not doing that. It's just simply so that your brain is like, oh, oh, we're awake to this. I get it. I see it. I understand it because we can't change or shift what we are not aware of. Once you're aware of it, then you can choose differently. And I'm going to give you a couple of ways that you can do that. First, one of the most powerful things that you can do is pause before you commit, especially when it comes to the people that you love, especially when it comes to clients, when you want to just like please everyone and make sure everyone is taken care of. It's very easy to overcommit or say yes to something before you have even like, like processed it in your brain. So pausing before you commit gives you an opportunity to feel it out, to check your time, to look at your calendar, to do like an energetic check-in, to do a physical and mental check-in. 
You don't have to answer people on the spot in order for them to know if you're going to help or not. And so what I like to do when I'm just like, I'm not sure if this is too much, if this is something I'm capable of, if this is something that maybe can we do later, I like to use the phrase, I would love to help, but I need to check things. Can I get back to you tomorrow? This isn't committing. This isn't a yes. This isn't a no. It's simply saying I need time to check in with myself and my schedule. And most people, if they're decent human beings, will totally understand and respect that. And also, if they don't, holy fucking red flag for you to, again, build another layer of awareness to see who maybe is unintentionally or intentionally taking advantage of you and your time. The next step then is to check in, ask yourself, what do I need? What does my schedule look like? What is my energy like? You know, maybe you want to help somebody, but you just, maybe you're done. This gives you a chance to like truly evaluate things, which is now taking you out of the subconscious mind and getting you into the conscious mind, which again, reminder, we're only operating out of for three to 5% of the time. And so by doing this, it has to be intentional. It's going to feel like work in the beginning, but what you're doing is training your brain to have new subconscious habits and beliefs. So after you do this a handful of times, your brain's going to be like, oh, someone's asking something of me. My natural thing to do is to pause and to check in with myself. Then, and this might be one of the hardest parts, is to get very real with yourself and be honest with yourself and the other person. I would really love to help. And I looked at things and the next few weeks in my schedule are kind of crazy. I'm not sure if this is something that I can help you with maybe next month. And if not, I totally understand. But for right now, it has to be a no. Are you willing to say no? That's the tricky one. Because you've recognized it. You've acknowledged what you need. You've acknowledged what your capacity is. Now it's the brave, it's the gutsy decision to be honest with this other person. On the other side of the coin, it could also be, I've checked in. I have some time. I have the availability. I could do this on Thursday. You know, I, this feels good to me. And so, yeah, now I can help them. Do you see and understand the difference between the energy behind helping and people pleasing? People pleasing is like running in front of people all the time, rolling out a carpet, making sure that the circumstances are perfect. Helping is watching somebody on their journey, hearing them when they're asking for help, checking in with yourself and saying, yes, I'm ready and willing to lend a hand. Because when you check in with yourself, when you are more fulfilled, you have protected time, energy, money, resources for yourself. When you are putting your tasks and your needs first, that fills your tank in a whole different fucking way. And it gives you so much more power, so much more energy, and so much more willingness to be able to help people along their journey as well. It's really hard to help people when you're like bummed out and fucking tired, but when you're rested and you feel good, yeah, I want to help people stop waiting for a sliver of time in your schedule to maybe do something for yourself. Cause that's not getting you a badge of honor. That's not getting you the success that you want. That's not getting you where you want to be in life. And it's also not allowing you to help and serve the people in your world. Give yourself permission to take care of yourself first, knowing that one, first, foremost, always, and most importantly, you're caring for yourself. You're caring for your body. You're caring for your mind. And that makes everything in your world a better place. And secondly, a great you allows you to be a great you for other people too. When you're fulfilled, when you're joyful, when you are on your success path, that radiates out of you. And it gives you so much more time and energy to be able to serve and help people in such a more meaningful and way of depth. So my challenge to you this week is to block in at least one intentional hour for yourself. Do something that you've been wanting to do, but haven't had time to do. That could be in your life. That could be in your business. That could be an activity that could be sitting under the sun, drinking a cup of coffee. Hell, it could be wandering around home goods. The goal and the point here though, is to do something for you. Not because somebody else needs you to, not because you're also going to run an errand while you're out there doing the thing solely, fully, and hundred percent for you. 
And I promise you, if you start to make this an intentional practice in your life and in your business, you're going to start seeing shifts that you cannot sit down, force, map out, or figure out. So come back and tell me what your activity was. Find me on TikTok or Instagram. I'm at that Laura Aura. Send me a DM. I'd love to have conversations with you outside of the show. I'd love to hear what your activity was and how you felt during and after. Of course, next week, we're going to be back with another amazing episode. Tuesday, we're talking with Chelsea about your gut like your physical gut, your energetic gut, healing yourself from the inside out. And as a, as a gal that has had gut issues for the last 20 years, um, this episode spoke so truly to me. If you're loving the show and are finding nuggets of wisdom, I would so appreciate if you could leave a review on Apple podcast. And as always, until I see you next time, stay gutsy.